Hey guys, Sean B. And today we are taking a look at the new dimension update, Sacreon. And we are looking at Vagabond and definitely Mystic Witch for two-way unit. And that is, oh, I'm so glad, man, Vagabond. I've been asking for Vagabond two-way for so long. And it's actually the Witch Staff and not the M Champion. So we have two human and what look like the human bonds. Remind me of the guy from solo leveling. Greeting from the dev team, blah, blah, blah. It's been a while since we announced the previous dimension. Yeah, it's been almost a year, bro. <laughs> we are happy to review the new dimension, new two-way monster you've been waiting for. Exactly. Currently in Summoner's one, there are four dimensions with each different concept. And now we will have the fifth dimension, Sacron. Did I say that right? I have no idea. The name of the new dimension, Sacron, is a place where forgotten heroes venture on journey with stories of their own. Take a look at the background of the dimension. Dude, this is actually solo leveling. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna stop with the with the reference. But it's like a a chamber where knights will have their meetings, you know, the, the council of the round table, whatever that is. Consists of dimension dungeon where the ancient guardian appears a boss, two-way dungeon for two-way, the newly added two-way monster, Vagabond Mystic Witch, and we have the skill below as well. The entry condition of dimension Sacron are monster of different attribute. In this dimension, you can only enter battle with monster of different attribute. Oh... So it's the opposite of Ilunia, where you have to use the same attribute. This one, you have to run different attribute. Okay, diversity is very important to the humans. Next up, the 2A monster of New Dimension. Bro, he looks so badass. Look at that boy. Sheesh. Okay, mama. Okay. <laughs> but they look so good. Yep, they look so freaking good. I love it. Vagabond and Mystic Witch have become even stronger with two-way. Tenacious Vagabond. Okay, whatever, whatever. Okay, let's now take a look at the skill. Okay, we have Roy and the Fire Witch only for this one. We're going to get the full skill later on, I think. Yeah, we don't have the skill for the rest of them. We have some other updates as well. But now let's take a look at the skill of the Vagabond. They're changing skill 2 and skill 3 into passive. Skill 2, attack the target additionally two times to decrease the target attack power for two turn if you attack the enemy with decreased defense on your turn. The damage increase according to max HP. So this skill will be activated if the enemy has decreased defense. So if you miss the decreased defense, it will not activate this passive. And then we have another passive, attack the target additionally to decrease attack bar to zero and grant irresistible provoke for one turn if you attack the enemy with no decreased defense on your turn. So if you decrease defense, you will slash wave. If you don't decrease defense, you will slash win. So if you decrease defense, you will attack break after that. If you don't decrease defense, you will control the target with attack by decrease and a provoke, which is really good. Interesting. Too passive as well. But it also means that he gets to use skill 1 every single turn, and he'll attack additionally depending on what happened after he uses skill 1. I think it's gonna be great for guild defense, yeah? For the one below, Fire Witch. The skill 1 is the same. The skill 2 will now decrease defense for 2 turns with no condition. And skill 3 will now heal, cleanse, and increase attack bar. So the difference between 2A and non 2A is the increasing attack bar in the spell removal. Oh, okay. A new fire healer cleanser and now attack by booster. Very similar to Vela Jewel, but Vela Jewel buff immunity. This girl heal. Vela Jewel can defense break single target. This girl can defense break AoE. Sounds better, but Vela Jewel is more about doing damage. This girl is more about supporting, not doing any damage whatsoever. Because Chung Feng is still on the most popular unit for control, I think this girl might get a spot in RTA, but definitely a useful support unit in general. If you're using her for R5, she's even better. If you're looking for a fire cleanser for R5, then she is one of the best options because she can heal and cleanse and increasing attack bar. Very, very good actually. I like this a lot. But the Vagabond skill looks really interesting because they're too passive that activate depending on the situation. If you build this guy without accuracy, you will miss defense break all the time, which means you will 
Grand Irresistible Provoke all the time. Is that the is that the plan? But you build this guy with good accuracy, he will defense break all the time, and you get the attack break as well. Do you want the attack break though? I kind of want the, the provoke and the attack reduction more for like RTA in general. If you're using Roy to attack, let's say a Riley, who has high resistance, if you build Roy with no accuracy, you get the provoke all the time. Most of the win tank for Guild War is Tractor, the Water Frankenstein, cannot be defense broken, which means if you put Roy on defense, it will always attack Tractor, always attack by decrees and provoking Tractor which is a counter to a counter, right? That's kind of cool. I'm not too sure, but it sounds pretty cool and I want to build him immediately. I don't think these two units will be meta break in PvE or PvP, but we'll definitely see Roy in Gilwa defense for 4 star tower, maybe. And you probably see the two-way fire which for like healing, cleansing and RTA, but probably not. But definitely usable unit for sure. The level 5 of Vagabond will be fire, level 5 for the Mystic Witch will be light. Oh, so the Witch is going to be a bit easier to fight. But you need different elements for this dungeon. So I think that element for level 5 will not matter because you need to have 5 elements anyway for your team. So this is going to be the boss. It looks pretty cool. And let's look at the skill. Skill 1 will attack all enemies to do damage. They ignore damage reduction effect and effect that resists death. Pretty usual skill for the boss here. Guardian, the ancient guardian attack speed increase whenever the ancient guardian or minions are attacked by the enemy. Okay, the same skill. At the beginning of phase two and three, the attribute of the ancient guardian changed to an advantageous attribute to the monster that inflict the most damage in the previous phase. Oh, <laughs> wait, but what if you use crow and crow did the most damage? It's just gonna turn to light. If your main damage dealers win. It's gonna turn into water to deal with your main damage dealer. But if your main damage dealer is LD, then I don't think you have to care so much. The Ancient Guardian and Minion deal 50% increased damage to the monster that have disadvantages attribute. Bruh. And receive less damage. Ooh. So I think you have to set up so that your main damage dealer is gonna be LD. Because if they change to the attribute that is advantages against your main damage dealer, you'll be in trouble. Aside from the basic skill, the Ancient Guardian has ability to summon monster. And we see LD. Whoa, there's this a Leo? But does it affect... Leo doesn't affect bosses, but if the boss summon Leo, does it affect everybody except the boss? Huh. Because the Guardian has a attack speed increase passive thing. If there's Leo on the field, then I have no idea. That's kind of weird, but we're going to see how it happens in the real battle. The first phase increased the Ancient Guardian attack power and defense by 50% each and decreased the chance of receiving a critical hit by 50%. So you can't really crit the Ancient Guardian. It's going to be RNG and it's thick with high defense. Ugh, I don't like that. That's quite annoying. That is rather annoying. Do you have to use non-crit damage dealer or you just don't care and use anything anyway? There's another unique aspect of the dimension. It can change attribute situationally in battle. Okay, I saw that before. Enter the battle as a light attribute in phase one and the boss attribute changed from phase two. The boss changed the opposite attribute of the monster and inflict the most damage. For example, if Lucian inflict the most damage in phase one, the garden changed to fire attribute. If Rakan inflict the most damage in phase two, the Guardian changed to win. Okay, but what about the LD? The Ancient Guardian will not change the attribute if that's already changed during phase one and two and three. It will always change to a different attribute. The battle reward for clearing the second dimension dungeon as follow. We have Focus, Despair, Revenge, Blade, and Fight. So I think this is the first dungeon that give out Revenge Ancient Rune which is a pretty popular set in RTA or PvP in general, I gotta say. And Despair, which is really good as well. So Despair Revenge is gonna be farmed here in this dungeon. I shall call this the Juno dungeon. <laughs> because you're gonna farm Despair Revenge for Juno, Revenge for Vert. It's gonna be the Bruiser dungeon, yeah? Despair Blade is pretty good too. New Focus, Revenge, and Fight Ancient Rune. Fight Ancient Rune. This is also a PvE dungeon. You want good fight rune too. They're expanding the rune grindstone and gem sort by a hundred. Not the most amazing. 
only a hundred. We need like a thousand more, to be honest. We hope this can relieve some of the pressure. Yeah. I mean, not a whole lot, to be honest. We'll wrap up today, definitely, by announcing another update that's been planned along with the new Dimension Hole update. Is the Rune Power Q? Let's find. Oh, finally, Rune Power update. Oh my god. Rune Power Up Q is a function that can register 10 rune in advance to power up, and the register rune will be powered up sequentially. Oh my god! Let's go! <sighs> it provides and enables summoners to register rune power up and enjoy other content, including battles. Oh my god, we can actually do something else while we're doing rune power up and maximum of 10 runes power up. <sighs> Oh my god, the main UI will be changed as follow. Okay, there's a minimize button over there. And there are 10 runes. Oh my god, can we do this for artifact too? <laughs> oh my god, thank you so much. Sheesh, this, this is amazing. Add all the runes to the power up queue during the rune power up. Minimize the pop up during the rune power up and select a power up another rune and register to the rune power up queue. The order of rune power up follows the order. Register to the power up queue and the order is indicated by the number on the rune icon. Enjoy other content during rune power up. Minimize the shit. Immediately register rune obtained as a reward in various content to the power up queue and enjoy content without existing. Oh without exiting. For example, you can immediately register rune obtained as a repeat battle reward to the rune power queue and proceed to the next repeat battle. <sighs> you can sell power additionally in the rune power queue result screen. Oh my god, so advanced! <laughs> oh, I'm just so happy, man. They finally do it. A menu can load the minimized rune power will be added. Okay, I see you. Unfortunately, artifact power up queue function would not be included, but if this can be done, that can be done too. Oh, that is awesome. So that's today's Death Note, guys. The best update in the game to get with new two-way. Gotta say, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool, I gotta say. Pretty good update overall. And we're gonna wait for the fully review skill for Megan and Darian here as well. And that's about it. Can't wait to make new content for you guys. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.